Okay, anyway, um, so the, the point that I'm making here is that if we look at different values of beta, we've already seen that for beta of 1, we produce this trajectory here. And specifically, we see that in both cases, as beta increases from, you know, 0, which, by the way, a, a, a beta of 0, meaning that we're not moving at all, effectively that means that the slope on this line here, a space-time versus time line, um, the slope will become effectively infinite, which is what a vertical axis is. And then a slope of zero means that this has, you know, coincident with the x-axis here. So those both match in the, in the zero case. As beta increases to one, both of these become the same line, y equals x, or ct equals t, uh, x, I'm sorry. And I should write that here. That would be... CT equals X specifically, and CT equals beta X, and 1 over beta X. So specifically, as beta changes, we know that this slope here, as, as beta increases, uh, so for beta equals 0, we have the normal x and t, or ct axes, and then now as beta increases, clearly a faster velocity means a higher slope for the x prime axis, so it gets a higher and higher slope up to 1, and this line here as beta increases from effectively 0 to 1, the slope becomes less and less. So the t prime axis approaches same. So I want to ask a really interesting question here. If you wanted to consider the order of events in, say, this frame here, in the green prime frame, if you have one event, say, on the x prime axis, which I'll, I'll draw as a solid now, and I'll draw the event in blue. So you have one event here, A, at that line, and another event, B, happening later, or, or happening there. Now, is that later? And the answer is yes. So the way that these axes are constructed this event, so if we, if you have lines of constant x, x prime, I should say, all the events of constant x prime are, sh are shifted over. So the position of A, because it's a moving frame, will always move over like that. The position of B will always be on this x prime ax uh, position. Similarly, everything here is at a position of t prime of zero. Everything here is at some later time. So specifically, this observer, oops, I did that slightly wrong. This observer would observe a positive time difference between A and then B. But let's consider what happens for light. Light's entire world line here is along a path where X equals Y. he doesn't see any, he or she doesn't see any sort of time delay between anything, because everything is simultaneous. In other words, there is no time difference between one event and the other because the axes are exactly the same. No time elapses in the time-like path, a uh, light-like path, I should say. And that's the, the oddity of it. Effectively, if time and space are the same, you don't really experience either one. They are simultaneous, is maybe the best way to say it. So effectively, everything is simultaneous. Or you could say all spatial distances are the same. Eh, that's maybe one step far. Um, but yeah, that's one of those kind of weird results if you want to try to interpret it too far. Uh, is there anything else I have to say about this?
Oh, yeah. Uh, and one more thing here. Uh, looking at, looking back at this diagram here, we're talking about changes in beta. Now, if you have beta of zero, the axes are the same. For increasing in positive beta, we'll say, the axes approach there. Now, what if we consider a case of negative beta? So, if you have a case of negative beta, all that means you have some equation that says, says for the x prime axis, this just gets slightly shifted downwards. So here we have some negative v or, or beta. And then here, if the slope is negative 1 over beta, that simply just shifts that way. So again, negative, they shift outwards. And positive, they shift inwards. And the angle, again, 1 over, 1 over beta and beta or the slope, more specifically. And so remember, the green is S prime, and what we're saying here, S prime has some negative velocity, or V is negative something in the X direction. So here's where the, the, the question kind of becomes interesting because what if we were to draw the Minkowski diagram for S prime now? So we know that S is, uh, S is seeing this person in S prime zoom by to the left in the negative X direction. What if we consider the spaceship's rest frame? They're going to see themselves at rest, and they're going to see the world swishing by in the opposite direction. So... Remember, they're both agreeing that this is the positive direction. This is, uh, and then the, the S observer, for example, what to say is stationary below them. So don't get this confused with the Minkowski diagram. This is a little sketch up of what's happening. Here is the observer in S. It's stationary. They're seeing the observer in S prime going by at negative V along both of their X or X prime axes. So all that happens, this guy here in the spaceship will say that this person is rushing backwards according to their velocity, but they both agree that's the positive direction. So their spaceship is stuck in reverse. They see a person going by uh, from the front of their spaceship that way. So literally the only difference here now becomes this person now will have a positive X shift. And let's actually draw the diagram for the, um, the Minkowski space for S prime, labeling those as the, the prime axes. So let's uh, I'll, I'll erase this here. But it becomes a kind of interesting result. So I'm going to now draw this as the, and remember, we'll, we're calling it CT. So CT prime. And just as convention, the CT prime and the X prime axes go, you know, perpendicular at the, in the cardinal directions. It's supposed to be flat, dang it, whatever. Um, and then now, if we want to do the Lorentz transformations, what you're going to end up finding is that if S prime was already moving backwards, and then if we do the inverse transformations again, or, or, or from that frame into the S, that backwards velocity, the negative sign for that will cancel the negative sign from doing the inverse transformation in the first place. I, I hope that makes sense. But if we flip the direction of the velocity and then we do those inverse transformations, we get back to our normal Lorentz transformations, and we, we see that this, uh, let's see, I'll do it as black, this now just becomes uh, the x-axis shifted by beta. This becomes ct-axis shifted by We'll say 1 over beta is, is the slope, or beta is the angle. I should probably just draw that as beta there. Yeah. And so we have a situation where, from this guy's, from S's point of view, it looks like those, you know, axes shift outwards, but that's exactly what we would expect from this person's point of view, because that looks to us exactly the same as the situation we had previously covered, where both axes tilted inwards. The only difference is now we've exchanged the primes and the unprimes because that velocity forced us to flip the sign in the first place. 
So I think it's kind of a nifty um, uh, symmetry here. And then, of course, both will agree that light-like paths go exactly at a 45 degree angle or a slope of one with the proper units. And then with that, one more thing that will now actually make a lot more sense, I think, is considering simultaneity of events. 